good morning learners today we will discuss the modern theory of interest till now we have learnt about different theories of interest these theories may not be full proof these theories may not be complete but yes these theories provide some valuable inputs and using all these inputs the modern theory has been built upon so the modern theory of interest is not a new theory nothing nothing so special about it but the truth is that it takes all the logical elements from the earlier theories and based on that this marginal theory has been built in marginal theory of interest we have taken four major elements and what are these elements investment and demand investment and demand curve is available to us from the classical theory then savings line this is also available from the classical theory then liquidity preference curve this is available from the theory liquidity preference given by j m keynes then quantity of money as we know that keynes had said that quantity of money or supply of money includes coins notes and bank credit and all this is regulated by the government therefore at a point of time it remains fixed it's not variable it remains fixed so money supply is fixed and on the other hand the demand decides demand for liquidity preference that decides the rate of interest but when we come uh, to the other aspects then we forget that one more important thing which has been learned earlier is the marginal productivity of money money is demanded because it has got the marginal productivity and the fact that money has got the productivity is it is demanded by the producers so putting all these factors together the modern theory has been created so in modern theory it takes two elements from the classical theory that is savings and investment and it takes two elements from liquidity preference that is supply of money and liquidity preference so in all these four elements put together they create the modern theory now the above four factors that is savings investment liquidity preference and quantity of money and income levels will decide the rate of interest so how is determination of interest done and how is interest savings curve is derived we will see this functioning with the help of a diagram both these drag diagrams are related to each other diagram 2 is an extension of diagram 1 in diagram 1 on the x axis we have given savings and investment and on the y axis we have shown the interest so if we let look at the levels of interest with the help of savings and investment then what we know that investment line is given investment line is a negatively sloped line now levels of income keep changing initially the level of income is s1 y1 and we know we notice that at point p it intersects i curve so from p if you draw a perpendicular line on the x axis then it will decide the savings and investment at this level of interest and as the income level goes on changing say from s1 y1 to s2 y2 then s3 to y3 then s4 to y4 and s5 to y5 and we get to know these five levels of income so as the level of income changes the interest also changes these points of intersection that is p1 p2 p3 p4 and p5 these points tell us that different equilibriums created as a result of a change in income because earlier it was not considered but the truth is that level of income is a very important determinant in the determination of interest so this level of income decides the rate of interest along with the investment line now if we draw a dotted line from this diagram to the next diagram then we notice that the first equilibrium touches at point r the second equilibrium touches at point r2 the third equilibrium touches at r3 
R4 and R5. So we get these Y points. And similarly, these income levels are represented by Y1, Y2, Y3, Y4 and Y5. And if you draw all these lines, then you get the five points A, B, C, D, E. And this is by joining all these points, what we get is the investment savings curve. This is the demand side of the interest as per the modern theory. So in the modern theory, we have to derive the investment savings curve. This investment and savings, these are the real elements. These elements have been taken from the classical theory. But these elements are dependent on the levels of income. Different levels of income which has been shown over here as S1, Y1, 2, S5, 2, Y5. Five levels of income. Five levels of income give five equilibrium points. From these five equilibrium points, if we draw a straight line to the next diagram, then we get to know the five other points A, B, C, D and E. And by joining all these points, we get the IS curve, that is the investment savings curve. Now, in the earlier diagram, we have seen that at particular rate of interest, savings and investment are in equilibrium. Savings and investment are in equilibrium because it has been decided with the help of different income levels and investment levels. So as the income level increases, the curve also shifts to the right and we notice that five new equilibriums are received. We get the five new equilibriums. So the demand side is created and as the demand increases, investment also increases. So income curve shift to the right. Now we come to the supply side. If we take the supply side of income, then we get to know that rate of interest is determined by the level of income and quantity of investment is found out. As we know uh, from the theory given by Keynes that income level is fixed. So it shall be denoted by a straight line OQ drawn perpendicular on the X axis parallel to Y axis. And at this level, uh, we will notice that levels of income change. And as the levels of income change, the rate of interest also change. And he, he, this is how we get the path of the investment savings curve. And this investment savings curve has been denoted here as the LM curve. Now let us go to the diagram and have a look at it as to how does it function. In these two diagrams, you will notice that on the x-axis quantity of money supply has been shown and on the y-axis the interest has been shown. As we know from the theory of Keynes that quantity of money supply is fixed by the regulator at any point of time and it includes everything that is coins, currency, bank credit, savings, everything put together. So this is OQ, a straight line because it is fixed at a period, at a period during a period of time. Now since this is fixed, how will interest rate be determined? It will be determined by income levels. Say level of income is L1, Y1, then this is the level of interest. If income rises L2, Y2, and further L3, Y3 to L5 to Y5. Then we get to know that rate of interest goes on increasing. And if we draw a line for the next diagram, parallel line to X axis, then this get, gives us four points, five points R1, R2, R3, R4, R5. And by joining all these points, we get to know the LM curve. You will notice over here that as given in the theory of Keynes, uh, uh, that liquidity preference theory, there is a certain part which is not dependent on interest. So this area, when the line is flat, it is not dependent on the interest. There may be any amount of interest, but the money supply will remain limited. People will not give money 
savings will not be given savings will be retained but otherwise as the rate goes on increasing more and more capital is available in the market so this is given by the lm curve now we know on one hand the demand line and on the other we know the supply line if we put these two in one diagram then we get to know the fixing of the rate of interest right now we have been able to derive the supply of capital and the demand of capital the demand of capital has been shown in the earlier diagram and the supply of capital has been shown in this diagram in this diagram we got to know the lm curve similarly in the other diagram we got to know the is curve now intersection point of is curve and lm curve will decide the rate of interest we'll see that in the next diagram this diagram what we get to know is that the is curve this is the is curve investment and savings curve and this is the lm curve that is liquidity curve uh, which shows the supply line of capital both these lines intersect at point e so we get to know that op level of interest oq is the income so the income or the capital which is available in the market is oq and the interest rate is op here savings and investments are equal whatever are the savings the same are the investments quantity demanded of liquid money and actual quantity of liquid money are equal now here what we find is that all the four are equal savings are interest liquidity preference and actual quantity of money all these four get equal at any po other point this is not possible if we move to some other point say we move to p1 here you will notice that savings are till this point and this uh, liquidity is at this level money supply and liquidity are at this level so both are different this is more and this is less similarly if you shift to another point there again you will find the same thing will happen but this equality will be established only at point e where the is curve and lm curve the two intersect each other so this is how the interest is determined in the modern theory of interest so we have learnt that there are different theories of interest and all the theories of interest are based on some fundamental facts capital is demanded because it has got productivity demand for capital is made by producers even the consumers make a demand for capital the government also makes a demand for capital so this demand for capital is made by all these parties if we put together all this demand then this demand is the total demand of the industry total demand of the country at any point of time in any society the demand is known similarly the supply of capital is again subject to certain aspects basically it depends on the rate of interest but the truth is level of income is a great deciding factor level of income decides the rate of interest so we notice that there are different theories uh, but importantly only three theories are very relevant for us one is the classical theory or the neoclassical theory the second one is liquidity preference theory and finally the modern theory of interest modern theory of interest is not a theory in itself rather it's a combination of the earlier two theories whatever uh, knowledge is gained through these earlier theories that has been combined together over here to create this modern theory of interest now the question arises as to what is the importance of the study of this interest we get to know by studying interest that marginal productivity is there in capital the capital has got productivity therefore interest is payable to the capital we get to know that by giving capital 
some sacrifice is made some weight takes place there is some time preference and therefore interest must be paid savings and investments they decide the rate of interest money supply the wide term money supply includes not only uh, the savings but it includes bank credit also it includes disholding of past savings also it includes non retention of depreciation fund also so all this money put together creates the money supply this is usually fixed at a, during a period of time the liquidity preference money is required in liquid form by the people and by the governments and by the business houses for certain purposes and as keen said there is transaction motive there is precautionary motive and there is speculative motive whereas transaction motive and precautionary motive do not depend on the rate of interest but the speculative motive purely depends on the rate of interest so this is why the curve in one area remains flat and in the other area it has a positive slope that as the rate of interest increases the supply of money also increases once all these factors are well known and understood the rate of interest gets decided in the market either by the market forces or by the government then there is one more important use of this theory of interest for the government government uses interest to promote a particular sector say rates of interest may be lowered in a particular investment loads rates of investment may be increased in a particular investment so the government in order to promote a sector or to support a sector uses the interest as a tool then similarly to ensure social welfare in the society government uses interest as a tool so one must eventually understand that capital's ultimate aim is not to earn interest rather the ultimate purpose of capital is to give productivity in a society interest is given for the weight for the sacrifice made by people it is a very important element but primarily capital's function is productivity and that is why we notice that in the developed countries the rate of interest is lower and in the underdeveloped countries or developing countries rates of interest are higher so this is how we get to know about the theory of interest and the importance of interest thank you very much